post hoc ergo propter hoc is a Latin phrase that means after this, therefore because of this. It refers to a common logical fallacy in which someone assumes that just because one event followed another, the first event must have caused the second. This type of reasoning mistakes correlation for causation. For example, if someone believes that a rooster's crowing causes the sun to rise because the crowing always happens before sunrise, they are committing this fallacy. This error often arises because the human brain is wired to seek patterns and connections, sometimes leading to incorrect conclusions. The phrase post hoc ergo propter hoc originates from the traditions of classical logic and philosophy in ancient Rome, where Latin served as the language of educated discourse. The term gained prominence as scholars began studying flawed reasoning and rhetorical techniques. Philosophers like Aristotle explored the nature of causality, identifying common errors people make when drawing conclusions about cause and effect. This particular fallacy was categorised to help people recognise and avoid faulty arguments. Over time, it has become a foundational concept in the study of logic, debate and critical thinking. Now let's look at some examples. One example of the post hoc fallacy can be found in sports superstitions. Imagine a basketball player who wears a specific pair of socks during a game and then scores a career high number of points. If the player concludes that wearing those socks caused their success, they are committing this fallacy. While the socks may have coincided with a strong performance, there is no evidence that they had any causal influence on the outcome. Another example occurs in the realm of education. Suppose a teacher starts using a new teaching strategy and shortly afterward their students' test scores improve. If the teacher assumes that the new strategy caused the improvement without considering other factors, such as students putting in more study time or changes in the curriculum, they are engaging in post hoc reasoning. Additional evidence would be needed to establish a causal relationship. A third example can be seen in medicine. Imagine a person takes a specific herbal remedy to treat their cold symptoms, and within a few days they begin to feel better. If they believe the remedy caused their recovery without acknowledging that most colds improve naturally over time, they are committing this fallacy. This misunderstanding could lead them to continue using a treatment that might not actually work. Finally, consider the context of technology. Imagine a business upgrades its office computers and shortly afterward the company's profits increase. If the management assumes that the new computers caused the profit growth without investigating other contributing factors such as seasonal demand or improved marketing efforts, they are falling into the post hoc trap. While the timing may seem convincing, correlation alone is not enough to prove causation.